All right, so we're back. Uh, this is the part two of the character customization tutorial where we will set up the uh, NGUI user interface. And uh, so let's get started. Uh, I cleared out all the UI stuff that I had in the scene and I deleted all the atlases, so now it's like we're starting from scratch. Uh, only thing that's left is the actual, you know, 3D scene and camera setup. Uh, what we want to do first is we want to create a UI route. UI root is the mother of all NGUI objects. You always need to have a UI root as some sort of parent for your NGUI elements. And so what we will do is we will go to NGUI. Uh, we will want to create a sprite. When, once we create uh, a NGUI element that doesn't have a UI root, it will automatically create a UI root for us. So there we are. Now you see it made a root object made a camera which will you know display uh, those elements in that UI root uh, and it also created the sprite that is our sprite uh, currently you notice you can't see shit and uh, neither can I uh, the Sun is actually blocking my screens I need to pull down my blinders okay so yeah you can't see anything uh, because we don't have any assets to show yet so what we need to do is we need to create an atlas. An atlas is a collection of sprites. Uh, it's like a, a sprite sheet, really, uh, where you can uh, pull out different stickers and add them to the screen. Um, so we will need to create that, that sheet. Uh, so what we will do is we have created a few sprites. These are old sprites. These will not be used. Bye-bye. Uh, these are all the sprites that we will use. Uh, so this will be a, a panel, background panel. Uh, this will add as an, um, a background to the different elements in the customization. This will be a button for everything, and this will be a little symbol for the buttons. Uh, so what we will do is we will uh, select all of these, right-click, go to the NGUI. Uh, I, uh, by now, I presume you have added NGUI to your project and installed it. Uh, and then you go Open Atlas Maker. Okay, so since we don't already have an atlas, let's create an atlas. Uh, there is none. We will take it. We'll add a little margin between the sprites. Uh, we will add these four uh, sprites that we selected and we click create. And now we need to select where we want to create it. And it automatically get, puts me in atlases, which is a pre made folder in my assets folder. And that's perfect. And we will call it main atlas. It's fine. Now it creates the atlas for us. Okay, so if we go to that uh, folder right now, uh, there is the atlas. So it's it's one game object. It's one uh, texture that's that's merged, and then this it's one material. Uh, now we can select it here from the atlas menu. For some reason it's red, but it works. Okay, good. <laughs> uh, and there's our sprite. Uh, so if we go to scene view, we find that it's really tiny compared to everything else, but doesn't really matter. Um, we go to perspective, uh, sorry, to isometric mode, and it's much easier to edit 2D. Uh, okay, so there's a sprite, and uh, if we want to, uh, if we want to uh, manipulate it, we either click the, uh, I don't even know what it's called, it's the little box thing, and we drag, and we drag, and then you see, oh, maybe that's not exactly what I, how I want it to look. Why have I created this square if I'm not going to be using it as a square. Well, that's one of the nice things with uh, NGUI. I think this is also possible with the original U uh, GUI. UGUI? UGUI. Um, but it's the slicing. So we will uh, change this from simple mode to sliced mode. And we will go to edit. Uh, you see here's the atlas menu and here's the sprite menu. So we click edit on sprite. Now we get an option to, to uh, slice this sprite up to a uh, nine patch so you can manipulate it and if you I think it's easier if I explain it after I do it uh, so what I will do now is I will uh, push in the left border you can uh, at the same time as you see it down and right you see the, where the border is you also notice that the actual sprite on the screen is uh, modified and what what this does these the borders that I set up is it creates a better way for us to manipulate the sprite in different ratios. So what it does is it uh, the corners uh, that are like beyond these 
uh, these borders will be uh, untouched. They will remain exactly the same as they are. And uh, the stuff in between will be uh, stretched. So as you see, you, there's some stretching on this area, uh, but it kind of looks good because it's metal and now it looks like brush metal. Uh, so it works out in this case. Uh, you have to tweak it sometimes. It doesn't always like suit your needs. Uh, but a lot of times it's it's really handy to like just use one sprite but have it for a lot of different purposes. So that's cool. So what we want to do uh, to start off, I'm gonna I think I'm gonna move the game window down here so I can see like the view while I edit edit. Uh, what we want to do is we want to set up the like the menu uh, on the right uh, left side left hand of the screen. I think I'm also going to go in here and change the pixel size to, I think, about somewhere there. It's uh, something you can play with if your stuff looks too big or too small. You can play with that one. I want to put it there. That's fine. Okay, and it's still a little too big, so I will uh, keep pulling it. If you don't want to go up and click here all the time, yeah, you know you can switch between these uh, different uh, widgets with the Q, W, E, R, T buttons. So T button is for manipulating the UI. Uh, da, 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 so let's put it there, that's fine. Okay, uh, so now we got our background. Uh, let's call it background. And uh, underneath here, we will want to add a new game object because what I wanna do is I wanna have a grid. Uh, and UI has uh, what's called grids and it, uh, it's yeah. It's basically like it orders stuff and uh, places even spaces between them. So let's add the grid component. Sorry, not the GERD, but the grid component. Uh, and we want it to be vertical, so it goes downwards. And uh, we can play with this the uh, other ones later. Let's just put it to top for now, so we know it's centered, and move it up there somewhere. Okay, so uh, what I want to do now is I want to create, instead of like creating all the buttons by themselves, I want to create one um, element with text in the middle, a little background, and two buttons. And then we will duplicate this, and the grid will make sure that it uh, looks good together. Uh, so let's call this element as a, just an empty game object uh, to, to use as a group. Uh, and then we will add a label. Uh, you go to NGUI, create, and you go label. You can also shift, hit Alt Shift L, which I regularly do. Um, by default, you will get the ugly gradient. Let's remove that. Let's make it a little smaller. I want it to be bold and italic. Uh, it starts to talk here about, uh, yeah, you shouldn't use Unity fonts when you use NGUI, and that's true. Uh, I am going to use a Unity font right now. Uh, it might create some garbled content, but creating another atlas for a bit mapped fonts is a separate tutorial I would say so let's stick it for now uh, I haven't really issue um, come across any issues with it earlier so it's fine uh, and we want it to be what's nice also with the dynamic fonts is you can switch between the different uh, styles so let's go bold and italic that looks not too crappy Okay, so now we have the label. This would say, maybe, uh, for example, for our first element, it would say hair. Uh, this could say, I don't know, spoiler, or this could say, um, you know, face paint or whatever. But uh, we will start with hair for this orc. Okay, um, we also want a, wanted a background for this one. Uh, so let's create another sprite inside of this uh, this element so there's the sprite and what we want is the one called rounded panel rounded panel we will need to slice as well uh, so let's put the borders like right next to the rounded corners that we've created somewhere I think yeah let's put 20 on all of them <clears throat> sorry uh, we also need to check the depth so the background is at depth zero uh, if we put it forward it will come uh, in front of the other elements so let's keep track of our elements uh, okay so this should be depth one because it's uh, just below and we will move the grid down a bit to 
here and then there's the element the label and the sprite the label needs to come out at uh, depth 2 to be in front of the back, uh, element background we will tint this to a black and with uh, just some opacity we all uh, don't really want this to be too uh, apparent just to you know it looks it looks good <laughs> it, it's the desi design that I've chosen uh, I'm gonna pull these instead of the, using this one we can go here to change the width and height um, so I'll put the width about there and the height about there look there's a pretty little hair element okay 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 so let's add a button I will press alt shift s to create a new sprite and then now this time we're going for the blue button which I have misspelled but that's fine let's slice it real quick uh, same procedures uh, with the other ones this is hand painted so it's not as even as the other ones but it looks kinda good anyway okay uh, so let's place it where we want it I, uh, I want a plus and I want a minus button or like a back and forth left right button uh, so let's bring down the height and we need to put this this could be also at depth 3 it doesn't really collide with the other with the other with the text mm, I think I want to edit the pixel size to be uh, there so it doesn't look as um, great it's cleaner okay so that's uh, one button and on top of this button we want to add another yet another sprite and we will choose the arrow uh, I'm gonna place this a scale minus 1 and X uh, to reverse it and then let's put this I don't know 50 and times 50 no okay somewhere there that's nice uh, we sh really should uh, name our stuff so actually a label could be called label that's fine uh, sprite, this sprite should be called element background this should be called mm, minus button this should be called arrow okay uh, so now we got almost half of our stuff uh, the arrow should be at depth 4 that's fine okay so now we need a plus button we should probably place this as about 87 which is mirrored uh, and we should uh, put the scale on this back to a 1 in X to make it go back and we will rename this plus button okay so now we got one element that was fast right cool 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 so now we got this and now we can multiply this I noticed that we will run out of space to <laughs> to write hair color and beard color uh, sorry hair color yeah hair color and skin color so we will need to do something about that it'll be fine we'll just write the uh, skin and we can do double rows it's fine okay so now we get one element and uh, we are not really done because these aren't buttons yet these are just sprites uh, so we will need to add component and we will write button we will take the one called button not this one I think this is the built-in UI I think this is the huge UI and UI. yes it is okay so it comes with like uh, some preset stuff we are not gonna care about this the only thing that's important to us right now is uh, the on click behavior which we will set up in part 3 uh, what we will need to do is we need to set up a collider for this one uh, so the game knows where we click we click box collider and uh, we will need to resize it but NGUI has the function called auto adjust to match which will automatically change the collider to the same size as the actual sprite as you can see by the green colored uh, line let's do the same for the plus button uh, we add the uh, button component and we add the box collider component and we do auto adjust to match okay so there we have one element uh, now what we could do and what we will do is we will duplicate this uh, with control D uh, so now we have one and we have two three four five oh no Mike they're all in the same place what have you done not to worry I will now, now go to the grid I will go to the little cog and I will go to execute uh, okay now they're not in all the same place now they are fucking everywhere sorry for the language um, what we need to do then is we need to adjust the cell height to make sure that they all fit which they will not okay so we need to do, 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 do. 
Actually, maybe this is fine. Yeah, let's go with that. And then we just adjust the background. Uh, okay, let's try. Uh, there might be a problem right now because they are parented in a bad way. That's fine. Okay. That looks cool. That looks cool. Okay, but these will all be hair. So this is hair, and this is... Uh, this will be beard. This will be tusks. This will be skin. Color. Yeah, that works fine. Okay. Uh, and the last one will be hair. Color. Okay. Uh, really, that is the. Oh, we're gonna make the randomize and the save buttons. Uh, so outside of this uh, background thing, we will add another sprite. Um, yeah. Uh, with Alt Shift S for sprite, we switch from arrow to blue button. We pull it down here. Uh, we will change this from simple, uh, which is the default, to sliced, to make it, uh, you know, uh, use the borders that we set up. Let's pull it down here. Uh, let's add a label to that this sprite. We will call this the save button. We will add a label to this by hitting Alt Shift L. We will remove the ugly gradient and we will write save. We will add the button component. And we will add the box collider. And we will resize the box collider. Now, okay, now that happened to the. <laughs> sorry, that was my bad. We added it to the wrong object. We wanted to add it to the sprite. So let's do box collider and let's do button. And let's change the size of the collider. Then let's duplicate the save button to create the randomized button, which we will place just here. So this will say randomize. Uh, this will be called randomize button. And da, 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 that's it. Cool. OK, now the UI is set up, and we are ready to go into the actual scripting and connecting this with the script. Uh, so moving on to part three.